Gladiators will finally make its long-awaited return to screens on set after 25 years, with a whole new cast set to do battle in the iconic arena. The beloved BBC show has been given a woke makeover with famous skimpy outfits and cheerleaders acts. The show saw members of the public battle it out against a cast of superhuman-like athletes known as gladiators. However, die-hard fans are concerned that this woke new image will be a far cry from the show's hated, which at its peak pulled in 14 million viewers. So how does this new series of gladiators compare to the 90 seconds original? Mail Online takes a look at how this version compares to the classic. This new version of Gladiators sees a brand new cast of 16 athletes going head-to-head -head with contestants. One of the most iconic from the original series was Michael Van Wyk, Aka Wolf, who owns a gym called Wolf's Gym in Auckland, New Zealand where he now lives. Wolf was previously deemed the most popular gladiator on the series, albeit controversial thanks to his mean persona. Another iconic contestant is Diane Yaudel, also known as Jet, who has remained on Views TV screens and radio airwaves presenting on BBC Tees and featuring on BBC shows like Look North and Inside Out. Diane hit the headlines again in July when she revealed she's engaged. The former athlete said on the Chillin' with Ice podcast just over a year ago, a gorgeous lady approached me in my local supermarket and over a year later, we're going to get married. Among the 16 athletes set to make their gladiators debut is the monstrous giant, who at 6 feet 5 inches towers over his competitors. The hump, who eats over 10 calories a day, said, The weirdest moment for me was when I was competing on duel. I was looking across at the contender, and just beyond his shoulder I spotted Saracen, one of the original gladiators in the audience staring at me. This new series also has inclusivity at the forefront, with Fury set to be the show's first ever deaf gladiator. Describing it as her superpower, she said, I am used to playing rugby in front of crowds, so I don't feel nervous. In Sheffield, the crowd and the atmosphere was just amazing, and I just took it all in and really appreciated how amazing everyone was. It was wild, the atmosphere, the noise, the foam fingers. Everyone was just buying into it. The outfits. For many die-hard Gladiators fans, the skimpy lycra outfits were a screen state, as the daring athletes were keen to flaunt their toned and muscular physiques. However, in an attempt to make the show more woke, BBC bosses have decided to give skimpy lycra outfits the boot. The 1992 show was almost as famous for the tiny spandex tops and pants worn by the contestants as it was for the drama and epic clashes. The female costumes were so tiny that Susan Cox, also known as Vogue in the series, later admitted that she had to use bum glue to stop her outfit from shifting out of place. Speaking to The Glad Pod, a podcast that interviews the ex-stars, Cox said, There was a thing we all used to use, I'd never used it before, but apparently, it's a bodybuilding thing called bum sticks. It's a bit like a roll-on deodorant, but it contains skin glue. I don't think the guys used it, but we girls used to use it constantly, so when we were rolling around, our bums didn't hang out. Now the ladies who will take on the challengers will be wearing aerodynamic outfits favored by Team GB athletes. This series has also seen the famous cheerleaders face the acts by bosses. G-Force was a group of eight women who would perform an array of dance routines alongside the contestants and gladiators.